New York coffee is the absolute best coffee in the world. Bronx coffee, especially, because Latinos do not want crappy coffee. Each coffee is made in the machine. They... The milk. Yes, I uh, did get stabbed last night, slashed by a, a drunk dude I've never seen before in my life. Without provocation, from the rear, in a very noble, heroic, honorable attack. And, you know, when you look at it, it looks like he was definitely going for my juggler vein, I believe. <clears throat> he wasn't going for a face scratcher. I think he was going for the juggler vein. So this gentleman, who is a foreigner from some other country... <laughs> Um, appeared to be drunk and if he was faking it he was amazing and in fact one of the guys who uh, was came around later after the incident said that he had started a fight in one of the stores the previous day and he had to be like a bunch of people had to like get him come out of the store anywho I go to my corner store that I always go to Miss Sausages is the best. Ah, I love it. And out of nowhere, um, without provocation, this uh, guy uh, comes up from behind and boom! And I, I feel like a like a six-year-old just punched me. I was like, what was that? And I turn around and I see he has this little knife, like this long. And um, I carry a knife on me that's a lot longer. Uh, and it felt like the moment Indiana Jones, I was just, you know, I was totally calm. Um, first time in my life, I didn't have fight or flight instinct. It didn't kick in. I didn't get angry. I didn't get mad. I didn't, it was the weirdest thing. And I'm trying to, maybe not. Um, I can't find this. Um, anyway. He was standing there with a knife, and I was thinking to myself, completely calm. I could easily kill this guy like 40 different ways. <laughs> and physically, I could have, you know, I'm not an imposing guy at all, but I am clever. I could have broken an arm, I could have done this, I could have done that, I could save my vengeance for another day and get him for this weird attack and a couple wonderful things happened <clears throat> and some terrible things happened he approached me again with the knife and my face went kind of dry I was not no fight or flight I kind of like hit him with my eyes for a second and like with, with anger I wanted him to just leave and um, he kind of went like slack faced and like turned around. And as he turned around, like eight of the guys who are in front of the corner store there uh, came over to protect me. I'm like, you alright, buddy? You alright? You alright, Russia? They all call me Russia. You alright, Russia? You alright, Russia? I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Like, you sure? They were so cool. And um, these guys, uh, on occasion, I'm like, know someone who might sell marijuana in the neighborhood and these people are easy to look down on and say oh this guy is a you know a scumbag or you know whatever but I know some of these guys who sell weed in the area and another guy, person we know who's got like five jobs and one of them also is drug dealing and but like in a casual way to local people you know whatever <coughs> and um these are not bad people. The economics in this area, this is one of the worst areas of the Bronx that I choose to, to stay. Um, I love being itinerant here. Um, I could go live on the farm upstate, not give it to Stephanie. I could stay up with my many friends who love and care about me. But I really love doing this. And at first I thought I'd leave town and come back and leave town and come back, but last night was really powerful for me. And, I, it was the first time in months I kind of failed. Um, for the past year, I've been going through all these different like trials and tribulations, and with each one, um, I took them as a test, whereby I would not let the, these tribulations affect my 
my spirit or my morality or my anger or my tempo or intensity or my you know potency or have any loss of control of myself and, and my surroundings. And I'd done really well. I had a bunch of different terrible pain things and all sorts of different types of trials and tribulations. And I did really, really, really well. And tests, lots of tests. And this one was one that came out of the blue. And I think I did well in some ways, but I think I failed it. And I know you guys are going to say, buddy, you're, you know, you have to think, what about that scientist thing? You know, you're a scientist, you never fail. You can always fail big, you know, to achieve even bigger. But I was really thinking about this, and with violence, it's always failure. You know, with war, it's always failure. And it made me think that maybe... Maybe E.T.'s not here because some horrible disaster is coming to kill us from far away. Maybe we're the disaster who's destined to kill ourselves. Maybe the Fermi paradox is technological societies get more and more powerful and fewer and fewer people can do more damage to one lone wolf. The nuclear weapon can take out a whole city. In time, one person might be able to take out a whole civilization. What do you do? Ultra monitor everyone? Lose all freedoms? Or do you just start to really care about each other? And learn empathy, which is resonance. And resonance, harmonics, is the only thing that transfers energy from one field, one area to another. And that's, you know, everyone who gets involved in this esoteric stuff, the ESP, why do people have the ability to change these machines and to affect all this stuff around them? The two-slit experiment, all that stuff. It's a logical extension. So the reason why I failed last night is I gave in to anger, which is the ugliest, ugly, ugly emotion. And although I was in control of myself, I think it's a reflection of all the yoga and spiritual stuff and physical mind-body stuff and the muse, controlling my heart, controlling my mind, being able to relax myself and all these different conditions. And really, importantly, is using the muse like we've said from the beginning, whenever you use any of these abilities, ESP especially, RV especially, if you do it under conditions of adversity, that will give you real world conditions. So when you confront a real world situation, you react much better. You know, when police train to shoot, it's not just at a range. They try to have recreations because you're never in like a real, you know, you're never in perfect pose or, you know, whatever. Life's not perfect. In a real world you need to train for its impediments. So maybe E.T.'s <clears throat> dropping so many craft to save us from ourselves, to help us save us from ourselves, not to get us to crap off the planet, but for us to realize we're in a huge, big universe. They want us to tell everyone that it's a universe of life. Maybe they're not shooting back at us because none of their ships have weapons. Maybe once you get to this technology level, you are supposed to realize that war is complete failure. It's the only thing you can fail at. Violence and war is the only thing you can fail at. And I think I was protected by God. I think since last night, I've been dramatically healed by you guys, your prayers, your love. And I can't thank you guys enough for that. I feel it. I felt it. I, this morning I felt it again. And it'll continue to heal very well. I'm certain. Yeah, I haven't touched it. I was cleaned by the um, medic. And a lot of you are going to be very upset. And we're very upset. I, I, I love you guys so much. But I want you to think about something for a second. When someone's hurt or injured or something like that. Or in a stressful, intense situation like that. If you're calling really intense... You got no, 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 you got to do it. Oh my God. You are adding stress to someone who's already going through stress. So if you really care about them, ask them, hey, what can I do for you? Are you okay? Okay, take a breath. You know, are you sure? Is there anything I can do for you? Well, I'm here to support you. What do you need? You know, things like that. Stay calm. Stay relaxed. Don't freak out on them. And to me, it was such a sign of such love from you guys. 
and uh, everyone, I really can't tell you how much I appreciate it. You know, I, I did not resort to violence during the attack. I turned the other cheek, but as he approached me that last time with it, before my, my buddies got there, I looked at him with anger. And, you know, go away. And that was wrong. Probably. And, you know, I was angry. Telling him to go away was not wrong, but doing it with anger was wrong. So I need to learn more control. And I think humanity, I think maybe that's what it's really about. Maybe it's to prevent us from killing ourselves. And they want us to tell everybody. They want us to use the devices on the craft and the craft and the knowledge of metamaterial and the power and everything and the craft to make us a super ecological society. We can use this stuff to save the planet. Something wacky hit me the other day and it almost sounds better as an art installation than reality because it sounds so fanciful. But if we were really wise and realized how big and beautiful our universe is and how precious humanity is, there's only one humans in this galaxy filled with so many amazing different species, guys. You know, governments have been keeping the secret not because they thought society would go violent, but so that they could make those weapons based on the technology. And that those will be the last weapons we ever make, ever use. Look at the Fermi paradox. We normally kill ourselves. We have to turn our swords into plowshares. This is why they are here. This, to uh, give us a better chance of saving ourselves from our violent nature and from our destructive ways. Um, you guys know I do inventions and stuff like that. I came up with this kind of, it's more like an art installation idea. The sa sword, Swords into Plowshares initiative. And the idea is to take real world weapons since humanity no longer needs them. We don't do human on human violence. We realize it's insipidly stupid. So any tanks or tracked vehicles can have a spike and then a planter. Could grow a plant that's already a few inches long. And as the tank treads go along, it'll go whole plant, whole plant, whole plant. We could turn bullets into, or bombs, cluster bombs, into seed distributors. And the whole thing, the whole bomb has been converted. We recycle parts and pieces, biodegradables. Even the metals are texturized to create habitat for microbes. And we can make munitions like the ones down there that are filled with uh, growth medium. See, there's the tank. You see that or not? The tank in the treads, as it goes backwards, it looks like going backwards. The barrel now sprays the water from the newly planted little babies. And in fact, on like the second or third floor here, you have a Gatling gun, machine gun, spring-loaded, preloaded plants. And that sucker right there can go across a lot of different terrains, planting as it goes. <clears throat> but I'm learning so much, guys, and yesterday was really impactful, and I had to ask for forgiveness for my anger. I think in so many ways I, I handled it well. No, I'm not going to leave the Bronx. Uh, I would accept a hotel room, though. <laughs> um, I, you know, the guys came up and, and were there for me, and it was just such a magical moment for me that, you know, I lost my mother, I lost my father, and, uh, you know, I, in a way, I do have a family out here. I do have friends, and, um, and you guys are my primary family. And uh, I love you guys. It's been a wonderful learning experience. I know there's so many things I wanted to say that I forgot. Um, I'm going to do nothing except for rely on healing, self-prayers, and your prayers. And it will continue not to have 
to swell up. See, it hasn't swollen up today. There's no red, which indicates it's not infected on a larger scale. And I realized how close I came, how lucky I was. You know, it's funny, the previous day with homeless, you know, there's people, homeless people and people that you, you help in, in difficult situations, they're there because society has forgotten them and given up on them, or a parent gave up on them, or someone gave up on them. I'm not giving up on these people. And yeah, there's going to be a yin to the yang. There's one guy who comes in whenever we have a grouping of, try to help with some of the, our friends here on the street. He comes over and he's like bullies them, and I, everyone hush, you know, shuttles him away. But um, I think we do need to turn our swords into plowshares. I think that's the solution to the Fermi paradox. Maybe they're giving us the craft, like, come on, come on, tell everybody. Start making the stuff. The planet's in a massive extinction. You're in a mass extinction now. They realize when an animal goes extinct, when a species goes extinct, <laughs> that's millions of of years of work to recreate naturally. Let's, let's keep turning the other cheek and turn our swords into plowshares. I know I'm so freaking corny and a dreamer. <laughs>